What's up, nerds? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have the ultra, ultra, mega, super, ultra light <laughs> kit for you. We were wondering, what if you traveled down the river, let's say you're waiting, maybe you're in a kayak, whatever, and you just want to bring the least amount of tackle possible and still catch a million fish, what would you do? And what we did is we, with the help of our buddy Ethan, who just came out with an epic double-sided tackle box, yep. uh, we put together a very tiny amount of stuff that I think that you guys are going to like. And we're going to fit it into a very small space. <laughs> yeah, the smallest amount of space, maximum amount of options. Yeah. That's, that's the goal here. And when we were yeah. picking space, we are like, well, what would you carry? Like, because normally I carry like a huge pack that has like batteries and all this other stuff. And then I was like, right. well, you could do what Ethan does. Because Ethan carries one very <laughs> medium sized, oh lord, oh, this is the well, actual bag. This is what we bring, typically. Yeah. It's pretty large. It holds 3,600 size boxes. We don't want to use 3,600 we sizes. Any, we're not doing any of that. So what does Ethan normally bring? The ultralight minimalist himself. He yeah. has fanny pack and it's maybe half full. So our, our yeah. goal is like, can we go even smaller than that? So what's smaller than a fanny pack, you ask? How about one pocket on a PFD? <laughs> we're like, everything that you need has to fit into one of these yep. pockets. That was the deal. Here, I will be Vanna White for this episode. <laughs> so I'm going to rig this puppy up. And what we're going to do is we're going to use just that one pocket because the other pocket has to hold our cell phone. Uh, that's it. So that's so, the deal. That's fit in one of these pockets. Yeah. Here are the things that you're going to need to have. You're going to have some sort of tools, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to have to, you have to wait a cut line. You're not going to be biting off like braid. That's just not going to happen. So you have to have some kind of tool. tool. This is the tool that we have been recommending for a long time. Now there's other options, but the nice thing about this tool, this is called a split ring, a split ring scissor, some version of that. Why do we like this tool so much? One, it's very inexpensive. You can get these from like, I hate to say it, but like the Tamus of the world. And this is something that they do very well, but yeah. Amazon and Bass Pro Shops uh, sell these, like the, a just lot of people it sell cheap. these. It's just the cheapest place mm -hmm. you can find it, but it's gonna have braid scissors. We're gonna unlock these here. You're gonna have braid scissors here in the center. That's the real benefit. The added benefit to these though, that not a lot of other braid scissors have, is some sort of plier. Not yep. only do you have a split ring tool here at the end to change out treble hooks and things like that, but you get pliers. Now, why would you need pliers when you're dealing with ultralight? You're talking about very fine, small hooks that get into papery little tiny mouths, and a lot of times these things get uh, choked. Yeah. And when they get choked, you gotta do a little surgery. So in order to do surgery, you need the right tool. So I think this is very light, very small, and there's a lot of different things that is gonna fit inside of our pocket. So that's going in. I you don't it, need you don't need there. this. This is taking up a little extra space. So we're taking Pretend a little bit of damage there. there. Doesn't that matter. That goes in. Okay. So the next thing you're gonna need too, before again, before we get to what I think is the most efficient thing, you need a little line. Like you're gonna break off, especially if you're doing light or ultra light, you're gonna break off. So what do you do yeah. when you break off? You need more line. These are Tenkara line winding cards. I know that was like a mouthful. Tenkara, Tenkara fishing is like super line ultra winder. light, ultra minimalistic fishing. It's like a yeah. telescopic rod. You bring like two or three flies and there's like barely any line on your fishing setup. So that's what Tenkara fishing is. This is how some of those folks store their line. Basically you've got six to 10 arm lengths of line per side. You can do one on each side. So this is very, very small, it takes up virtually no space, doesn't weigh anything. And then you just take a marker and you write on like, is it mono? Is it fluoro? Is it six pound? Whatever test it is. You can just write it on there. And then you can take two different types very mm -hmm. easily. So Jeff's got a six and four pound. Those are the most used for us as far as leader line. So bam, leader line taken care of, goes in. All right. And you can find those on Amazon for very inexpensive. Just search in Amazon, Tenkara line winding cards. You'll find those exact same ones. They're like less than a dollar a piece. They come in a six pack for like six or seven dollars. We'll put a link. All right, so before we get to the terminal tackle, we got to hit the plastics. You, you so need plastics? You're going to need some plastics. You need some kind of bait. Our assumption here is that we're not doing live bait fishing, which you totally could, but I don't want live bait up in here with not me. Ideally. Uh, so what we're doing is mostly we're going to fish ultralight jigs with mm -hmm. our ultralight kit. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go out there and we're going to be fishing our favorite ultralight plastics. Which ones would you bring? Well, you don't need too many. And we've already done an ultralight hack video on this. So an option that you have, especially if you have tray options, like with mule fishing, is you can just make an assortment pack of colors. So I can bring one of these with all my burrow bugs in my favorite colors. In this case, we got like black and blue and green pumpkin and 
added some pasture fire, which is orange green pumpkin as well. Uh, I can mix and match. I didn't in this one, but I can mix and match some worms. So I can have all the jack worms in there. There's all the donkey tail juniors in about four or five different colors. That's the, that's the live <laughs> pack. That was, this is not staged. That's what you want. So we got like our, our burrow bug for a mini craw presentation. That's very natural. We've got a nice worm. If I want to upsize the presentation a little bit, we got the DTJ as we like to call it. If we want to paddle tail around. And this is one of my favorite things to catch fish on. And then if things get hairy, we bust out the copper truce and we go with the micro Ned on our ultralight jigs. And that way we're going to catch. So I've got a good setup here with these just four different types of plastics in a million different colors. And that's, so this is, this is where mule fishing starts. Like that was actually the genesis of this whole idea. Well, the, the real genesis came with like the last thing we're going to show you. So stay tuned for that. Mm -hmm. But mule fishing makes what I think is some of the most like flat, like just by fishing their, I hate to say this, but this is why we have worked with mule fishing like so closely in the yep. past is because like the jack worm is a great example of like with this one pack, you actually get like three or four different baits. Yep. So you have a net here, like you can just cut this down and make a net, right? With the jackworm, if you mm -hmm. want to have a trailer, like a curly tail trailer, you've got a curly tail trailer. Maybe you have to do some trimming, but you've got it. If you want to do a wacky rig, mm -hmm. you've got a wacky rig. If you need like to do a shaky head, you just snip off the very end curly tail, you've got a shaky head. So this is like six baits in one, and to yep. just point, you just pick your favorite colors, load these up. One thing I do as well is if I just want to keep less bags, these trays are single sided. I just flip one over and put it in the back. So this one bag can have two trays in it. It's still very small and carries for one day of fishing. You need one or two of every color. The reason you can get away with that, most plastics you can't. You need the whole bag because if you're going to get bit, you're going to lose that plastic. Yep. But because the mule fishing ah, plastics have this, they're super stretchy mm -hmm. and they don't really get waterlogged. Like a whole day, you won't waterlog one plastic. And so, you're just not gonna lose plastics that you're carrying with you. So you really, I would say two of each color and then you're good. Yeah. That's how you can get down from, normally I take 12 packs of plastics to everything I need to maybe I only take three bags. Like I yeah. think three bags is like the magic number where you've got what you need and you don't, you're not carrying too much. Yeah, and I, I, obviously we know what you guys are saying. If this is the mega ultralight ultralight kit, then why do we have four bags of plastic? You could get down to one. I think if you had one yeah. tray of cross and one tray of like either jack worms or paddle tails, that, that's fine. This is just, if you wanted to carry everything, like this is, I think this covers everything. This is if you're going out on the water for six to eight hours, yeah, right? Like 100%. I'm not just doing a quick little one hour trip where I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go fish the burrow bug only. Then, this is, yeah, you could even go lighter than what we're doing today. One bag of plastic, plastics would be like, I know what they're gonna bite on. Like yeah. I've been here before, I know what I'm dealing with. Three to four bags of plastics max would I be like- I can go anywhere I want exactly, and figure it out. Exactly. That's the idea. So, so these go in and we're, we're maybe, zip them up, we're maybe 30 percent full. We got room. It'll still extend. <laughs> now you do need or you may want to have some terminal mm -hmm. that's outside of what we might keep in this box that we're going to show you here. So we're going to assume you're going to have some hooks that maybe you don't want to break out and put into this box. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to assume that maybe you want to have some specialized weights. So maybe you got like a new weight that you want to try. These happen to be from NACO. These are their bullet weights that you can use for ultralight Texas rig, which is mm -hmm. a ton of fun. So maybe you got one sixteenths and you want to try them out. So we're going to assume there's a couple things floating around and hanging on loosely. Hold on loosely. Don't let it go. <laughs> Last up, we've got all the terminal jigs, right? So all of our ultralight jigs fit right into this little guy right here. This is a double-sided box that just got dropped by Mule Fishing. Uh, now, there are other double-sided boxes on the market. This Gamakatsu thing... is the one that we found and heard about that. It cle it's clearly almost the yep. same box for the same price. So if you go get yep. that one, that's fine. But this one is from Mule, comes in their colors, is brand new, and is 10 bucks, which is nuts. Yeah, and it holds a hefty amount of stuff. Check this out. So there's all our jigs. I've got an assortment of colors and weights. And as you can see, there's room on the sides here to even fit the Bronco blades. So I have spinnerbait options, all my jig and color options, all the different weights from 1 80th of an ounce being the smallest ones that I have in here. I think they're up yeah, right there is my 180s. And then I've also got all the way up to 332s, which would be like these guys right there. And then I've got the two types of jigs that Mule offers, which is their standard offering. And then the workhorse, which is like a little bit of a different jig design. The so. workhorse is a little more of a swim jig and then less of a Ned type head. So it's got more of like an arrow shape. So there is the, oh my gosh, look 
look at that chartreuse. <laughs> There's the workhorse right there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just had a death wish coffee, so my... Shake ah! it. <laughs> And then there's your standard jig head design. More of like a mushroom mule. head. And then All it right. should be said, like you can customize right. this to be whatever you need it to be, right? In this case, the mule fishing is like, they do cover the gamut as far as ultralight offerings. Again, this is why we work with them because all their stuff is really inexpensive. For yep. five bucks, you get your pack of jigs. For 5 50 or something like that, you get your bag of plastics. And I'm still running like one of the first bags that I've ever gotten True. And years ago. So they last. So it's the value proposition is extremely high, but the flexibility, we showed you that with the plastics, so high. And then with the jig offering, just bring your favorites in here. Now, if there are, are jigs that you, and I think Jeff was kind of getting to this side here, but on the other side, you've got this pre uh, like slitted foam, right? So you've got this uh, mm -hmm. open cell foam so it's going to it's going to be able to hold like things you're using at this time you can see these jigs if you had plastics on them you can still slot them in here you're not going to lose them uh and then they're not going to like infect everything else right with the with the water yeah. and then but then you can also line up whatever it is that you you know whatever else you need so like again jigs i think this is a great example of where what you might want to keep in here but with the back side it, th this is just what we have in here but you fl it's flexible for how you want to fish so you take out a like my life in my own hands here. <laughs> shaking this from camera. 400 jigs. <laughs> <laughs> but you can see how each one of these, uh, just like any other Plano type of box, you can remove these dividers and move them as needed. So if you want to keep like pre-rigged plastics in here, if you want to keep like longer jigs or whatever it is that you want to keep in here, terminal on one side, hooks on another side, open hooks, whatever it is. Even like, I think like some small like slip float pieces can fit in here if yep. you wanted them to. So this side is what you need it to be. This side is everything else that you're going to need it to be this can get a little hefty if you're putting all your jigs in here this should be this is more than enough for what's needed for a day of fishing it's it, 10 you, times the amount you, it, need. you could <laughs> cut this in a quarter and still mm -hmm. have everything that you need because yep. again you only need maybe one or two of everything so this is the kitchen sink of the tiny vanity size kitchen sink you guys know how <laughs> i fish all right so here we go moment of truth moment of truth does it fit Oh, it's a little, oh, oh, oh. Easy, easy zip, it's dude. Not that, it's not that bad. Look at that. It's a little, Look at that. it's a little tight. Literally all the ultralight gear I could need for a weekend. Oh, this, yes, this is, this is like yeah. full trip mm -hmm. I could go with this thing. Gosh dang. And again, what are you really going without? Ooh. If you're ultralight fishing, what have you, with this setup that could, I yep. mean, again, this could fit in a fanny pack so easily. Like, what, what are you foregoing in this instance? separated tools, right? Maybe you have like your favorite pair of snips, but they don't have pliers, right? So you find a way to combine those yep. two things. Maybe you don't have all the line options that you want. Totally understand that. If you need three kinds of options, maybe you need another line winding card. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you need like larger jigs and maybe they don't fit in here, that's not really ultra light. So now maybe you're needing a second setup. This is assuming you're taking one rod. One very special rod <laughs> that is still available Limited time only, the aggressively average angler's mm -hmm. rod uh, from Monster Bass. So this would be our one setup that we take with us. And then I got this. And gosh dang, I can go. You can go up to a section of river. You can go. You can, you can go down to the 180th yep. as long as you're using like a four pound braid. Mm -hmm. um, but with a six pound braid, which is what I usually use, getting down to 132, it, that's where that rod actually excels uh, at. It yep. does its best work with a six pound braid. So you can get down to 132 very easily. And again, if you're an ultralight fisherman, going up to 332, not a problem, even with six pound braid on that rod. So that's the aggressively average angler. Ultralight rod still available from Monster Bass for purchase. It's 90 bucks. It's gorgeous. It's sweet. We've done videos on it. Go look at that. But that's the type of rod that we're talking about. So that gets you away from having to have an ultralight and like a medium light. Yep. You don't need that. Uh, six foot, long enough to handle the river, long enough to handle open water. Not the longest. Some folks for panfish, they love the 10 foot, 8 foot. Totally get that. But this gets you close quarters fishing very easily and also keeps you flexible enough to handle an open water. So this gets you down to one rod instead of two, which again is how you're getting around well, how can I bring less? Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. You get one rod that's flexible enough to handle everything. And that one box should be plenty for your terminal. And even the plastics, we're up to like three or four bags. You can get down to one. I mean, if yeah. it's paddle tails and worms, like you should be okay. Like you mm -hmm. could get rid of the cross and just use the curly tail end for a trailer. That's still a crop presentation. Like you're gonna be okay. So yep. you can go further than this. That's the kitchen sink. That fits not only in a PFD pouch, but easily in like a very small hip pack. No problem. One day of fishing, done deal. Imagine, and I want you to actually go beyond imagining. This spring, try <laughs> yeah, this, you guys. 100. Just do this. Just only bring one setup and just this tiny amount of tackle 
and go catch a million fish on some ultralight. Uh, We're if, gonna. If you've we'll do not, a video. If on you've it. not seen Creek Fishing Adventures or uh, fish anything, um, do do this exactly. Uh, they catch more fish than I do, and they have a quarter or less of the tackle that I bring. So it's, it's certainly challenge accepted. Yeah, it's certainly possible. And again, they're they're out fishing on a daily basis. So we've done this before. I think I don't think I've ever gone that light before. We're gonna go that light this year. Yeah. We'll take it out on our lightest setup paddle only uh, or go wade the river with yeah. just a little bit. Uh, the other thing about wading the river, right? Let's say that you're wearing waders. Mm -hmm. Typically waders are gonna have a chest pouch. This would also fit into that chest pouch. Oh yeah. I know for a fact it would fit into, I have a pair of Reddingtons, which are dead. I need a new pair of waders. Uh, but you got like the Sims, yeah. you know, whatever you got. If it's got a chest zipper pocket, Imagine only having tackle in there, like nothing else, no backpack. Just thinking about that, freedom. Makes, that makes me excited. So much freedom. You got no sling pack, you gotta swing uh, it around, uh, move it around, uh, zip it open, all that stuff. Imagine just taking nothing. That's what we wanna do. So yeah, we'll do a video on that this coming spring. Hopefully you guys get a chance to try it out yourselves as well. But let us know what you think. What is the lightest you've ever gone tackle wise out on the water and still like had a good day of fishing? Do let us know in the comments below. And so I would like to know what is the, mo what is the least expensive setup? I'm talking Ooh. like from every single thing that you brought, like every dollar from everything. If you bought yeah. it today, what's the cheapest, lightest setup that you've ever had? I'm going to go do the math on all of that yep. and I'm going to put it right here. Here's how much that is. That's not that That's bad. That's not that bad. But it's not that cheap. That's so, but you do better. <laughs> fishing for fishing for two thousand in two thousand twenty three. I think that that's a win. That is a dub. That's so a big dub. That's another. Again, most of what we try and do here is about getting you on the water more often, having as much fun as you can possibly have. That's the value proposition. So hopefully, this was a good way of showing you what you can do with just a little bit of terminal and mm -hmm. a little bit of tackle. So small space, lots of fun. That was the idea. So hopefully, that was helpful for you, helpful for you. Hopefully, you go and try that out uh, and let us know in the comments if you have. And um, thank you for checking out this video. We appreciate you. We'll see you on the next one. Bye.